So what we're seeing in the TM Forum based on surveys that we've carried out is that most of our service providers are interested in reducing the time to bring new services into operation. So that's the kind of concept cash kind of route. And one of the requirements to achieve that is zero touch automation. Uh, there's also a requirement on cultural issues, technology and things like that. But uh, it's one of the requirements that's driving that. And we're seeing this especially in the new service opportunities around industry verticals enabled by 5G. That's kind of where we're seeing the main industry activity. So actually the industry is in quite a better place than it was say, a couple of years ago. Concepts of intent-based management, closed control loops, the use of artificial intelligence are much more widely talked about. We've published quite a lot of material in this area historically. Uh, what we're seeing is an adoption of APIs, which we have quite a comprehensive and strong API program. The issues I think that still remain a little bit are understanding what are the business capabilities that those APIs have to support, both externally to partners in these new ecosystem type models, and also internally within the service providers to enable zero touch, what we call zero friction. Um, where we're seeing the automation requirements are around automation of the operational processes, we're seeing it around the need to automatically onboard new resources or new services, both from suppliers and from partners. And we're also seeing it a little bit in the area of building automated partnering with other partners. So those are the areas where we're seeing zero touch coming in. We've, we've adopted a slightly broader term called zero friction business, basically. Simply because uh, zero touch automation is very often associated with the historical processes of just automating operational processes for providing services. And um, actually there's three things that we need to do, operational processes, automated onboarding, and also automated partnering. So that doesn't quite get captured with the historical use of zero touch automation, which is important, but not the whole story. Well, I'm a believer in sort of iterative concurrent development, actually. So what we're seeing is lots of catalyst projects that we're running, looking at new e ecosystem models for particularly the industry verticals, IoT, smart cities, those sorts of things which we've been quite active in. Uh, at the same time, we're seeing iteration in the technical area. So we have a number of 5G catalysts, which have looked at a number of use cases. And what's happening is coming at it from both directions at the same time, we're starting to see a consensus emerging on what some of the business capabilities are. And we have a program of work on that uh, exact topic of business capabilities to support ecosystems, both those that are specific to specific ecosystems and those that are general and common, like security, automated partnering, those sorts of things, marketplaces, those sorts of things. Well, I think um, everybody's kind of come from in the past from it's just another thing we just add to our existing systems. But actually, there's quite a lot of cultural changes required and also a lot of technological changes. So traditionally, people have automated processes which represent what they currently do. What we're seeing is a strong move towards needing to have a more service or business capability based approach and then automating that on a 360 degree basis. So that covers both assurance, fulfillment, planning, all of that 360 degree life cycle stuff needs to be accommodated. And that requires a bit of a difference in thinking. Yeah, so we've done quite a lot of catalysts. I think we do about 20 to 30 each year, uh, typically. Uh, many of those have been based on looking at closed control loops, control uh, automation, looking at uh, intent-based management, looking at use of artificial intelligence, looking at use cases in industry verticals. So we've done quite a bit of work. What I think is really required now is for the industry to get behind what are the simple business capabilities that we need to get in place that we can effectively build simple solutions to what are essentially complex problems which can be shared across multiple partners. That's where we're at. So it's validating those models, those things is what we really need with some kind of industry-based activities. Okay.
so we've had in the past a number of initiatives which are being project based and they tend to end up with a project name as part of the thing so what we're doing with open digital architecture and also a framework that we're putting in place is pulling together all the technical assets that we've got into a more integrated holistic whole basically that's what we're doing and the open digital framework covers other things like for example maturity models um, you know uh, transformation techniques things like that which are more cultural more organizational based so Open Digital Framework is the broad topic. Open Digital Architecture is more the technical aspects of that, leveraging all the stuff we've done in the past, plus new stuff. By open, what we mean is it's to enable service providers to work with other partners predominantly, and they may be on the supply side, you know, network equipment providers or new cloud providers, or it might be with people they're partnering to deliver services to industry verticals, particularly IoT. So it's a, that's why we've chosen the word open. And it's important that these APIs are available, uh, that the uh, if you like the best practices behind them are publicly available, which is what we're doing at this particular point in time. So if you notice uh, from some of the presentations this week at uh, Layer 1, 2 to 3, particularly the people who have been looking at automating onboarding, Telefonica in particular, they stressed the importance of models and actually automation requires models behind them. So it's kind of the secret source that's there that everybody just you know, it just works together. It's like Lego, you know, it all works together. But behind Lego, there's a model of pins and spacings and things like that. So these models turn out to be quite important uh, in order to get something that looks quite easy to happen, basically. So that's a, quite an important part of the industry challenge, I would say.